First meal here in Amsterdam. Cooked us up a big pot with a broth, bow tie pasta, green beans, frozen green beans, some drumsticks, and two poached eggs. It is past midnight, and we're trying to get some sleep. Let's get to that clip of that guy. I don't know what's wrong with him. The security had asked him he's on drugs. Good morning, sir. First full day here in Amsterdam. Thought I would do a good morning right here, just to give a quick little room tour, six bed. We have a pretty busy day scheduled today. A lot of different places around the Centrum area of Amsterdam. And we're just doing sort of a zigzag itinerary that I planned. The first stop is Tony's Chocolonely Shop. We're on our way and we thought we'd show you guys the area right outside of the Amsterdam Central Station. This is where we came in from on the train from the airport. Well, the building itself is super pretty, super cool. And the area around it is super cool as well. There's the canal running through with the canal cruises. There's the parking station. Tons of people walking and biking, which of course like Amsterdam and the Netherlands is known for, but it's really cool to witness it because it really changes the way people move around the city center. One. We're at Tony Chocoloni factory and store. It's a little bit hard to find them. We thought it's like in the basement a little bit, but it's kind of a YouTube line is out the door. A lot of people come here to make the seven and a half euro chocolate bar. You can choose your flavor, customize the outside, everything. But we're just checking out. Uh, see this in the grocery store all the time at home, so I'm uh, glad we actually see where it comes from right here in the Netherlands. Left the store and bought some chocolate milk. I also got a sample of their raspberry popping candy in white chocolate. Mm. Very sweet. Good raspberry flavor. If you hold it in your mouth, it pops very gently. That's quite fun. It was about 150 euro for 500 ml. so chocolatey, but not too sweet. Mm. That's really good. Behind me is Amsterdam's oldest building, the Aude Kerk, which was opened in 1306. But after the Reformation in 1378, it became a Calvinist church, which it remains today, and it's known for its Gothic architecture style. Right now, I'm standing over the Amstel River on the Machele Bruge, which translates to the Skinny Bridge. And there's a tale that goes that there's two sisters with the last name Maher, which also means skinny, and they lived on opposite sides of the river each other, so they constructed a wooden bridge. Now, as you can tell, the bridge isn't wooden right now because the original one was completed in 1691, and it was actually skinny. It's actually not that skinny anymore. It's been rebuilt many different times in the same exact spot. We're now at Blumen Market, which is the world's only floating flower market here along the Signal Canal. As you can see, they're selling mostly flowers, tulips, little buds for people to plant. We've been stopping at different cheese shops because they have samples of both the cheeses and the little cheese dips and sometimes like strip waffles and gingerbreads. So we've been uh, snacking our way through the city. We just went to Von Stapele and they sell only one product, which is a cookie. It's a max of eight per person per day. Each is 250 if you buy six, there's a slight discount and they're made of dark chocolate with some chocolate chips and white chocolate in the middle. Super popular, there was probably about 50 people in line, but it moves pretty quick because they only sell one product. I think it's gonna be amazing. Honestly, there's nothing that crazy. It's good, it almost like a dark brownie, but nothing special. Milk and cookies, but Amsterdam style. Finding drinking water here is really easy because the city has all these taps. Dam Square was built in the 13th century when the dam was built around the Amstel River to prevent flooding in the city streets. In the 60s, the square was known for its hippies, but is now a popular tourist destination. It is also home to a lot of really important buildings, including behind me, the Royal Palace. Moving and grooving here on the second full day in Amsterdam. We are currently at the Nine Streets, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2010. 
and it's just literally nine little streets around the Amsterdam canal belt and apparently some of the names of the streets which I'll put on the screen right now because there's just no way I'm going to be able to pronounce them apparently some of them are named after animals to harken back to the days when this area was home to a lot of tanneries we're at our next stop the Rijks Museum right behind me is the back side of it and there's a whole garden and park area we'll throw some b-roll on but absolutely amazing building it is the National Museum of the Netherlands right here in Amsterdam in Museum Square. But originally it was established in 1798 in The Hague, so a different part of the Netherlands. And then in 1808, it was moved to Amsterdam, it was housed in the Royal Palace at first, so a different building. And now it welcomes over 2 million visitors a year, super popular and super lively. Right now we're at the Albert Koop Market on Albert Koop Street, I believe. And Albert Koop is the name of a 17th century painter. It looks like because it's five o'clock, looks like a lot of people are packing up. But it looks like an amazing street market all the way down and on that side as well. So we're planning on coming back tomorrow. I think there's some fruit stands, clothing stand, some traditional Dutch food like poffergies. We're on a look for a authentic stroop waffle. So maybe we'll have to come back tomorrow for that. But oh, oh, I just saw a boat. She just walked by with a chocolate dish stroop waffle. Maybe we still have a chance. Luckily, we still found a stroop waffle stand that's open. It's Rudy's stroop waffle right behind me. We paid $2.50 for one with chocolate. Never had it with chocolate, so I'm pretty excited. Mmm. Mmm. That's really warm. Mmm. Cinnamony. Oh, look at that. And they just closed up. Ooh. Last one. It's really good. We are out for the day in a tiny bit of a hustle. We need to go to Central Station, which is right across the water, but then we need to take a train, intercity train, to the actual bus station, which is called like Slaughter Jive or something like that. And then from there, we're gonna actually head to Rotterdam today. We just got off the bus, took about an hour to get here after the 10 minute train ride from Slaughter Jik. And now we're in Rotterdam. First stop here in Rotterdam is the Stadhorst or Rotterdam City Hall. And something interesting about this building, other than the fact that it has a symmetrical design in a Renaissance style, is that most of the city was burned down in the Rotterdam Blitz by the German Air Force on May 14, 1940. And this is basically the only major building that still stood. It has a 70 meter tall tower that has a clock, a bell, and an angel of peace and on either side of the main entrance there's two statues one of them is a doorman one of them is a tax collector there's 10 other statues in the back area that represent the other values and virtues of the city of rotterdam as you can see it's gotten even windier my hair is like even more all over the place but we just got finished with the tour center the discover rotterdam building which is really cool it's interactive some stuff you can listen and learn about the history of Rotterdam all for free. And one big thing we learned is they love to do innovative projects here. They have projects planned out for the next decade or two. But one example of that is this building behind me, this crazy building, which is the Market Hall, opened October 1st, 2014. It's a residential office building with a Market Hall underneath. Just a probably one minute walk from the Market Hall are these cube houses, another famous set of buildings here in Rotterdam. You can see they have this tilted cube design. They tilt the cube on top of hexagonal pylons. They were designed by Piet Blanc. And the idea was to optimize the space inside. His vision was that each house is like a tree and then together all of them are like a forest. Last, but certainly not least, this is arguably the most important landmark in Rotterdam, the Erasmus Bridge, a combo cable style and bascule bridge. Construction started in 1986, took 10 years to complete until 1996. It's our last stop here, uh, a few hours here in Rotterdam. We were running tight on time. We're gonna run to catch our bus back to Amsterdam. Had a great time exploring Rotterdam, but we gotta run. It cost us about 6.50 each to get to the town of Pomerend, which is where City Trip Hostel tonight's stay is at. And the bus dropped us off right across from it. So we're basically here. We checked into our hostel and we walked around looking to rent bikes, but unfortunately I'm too short. So instead of biking to Zanshan's today, we're just going to take a bus. We made it to Zanshan's! 
Look at how cute it is. My goodness, it's adorable here. What do you guys think? Back in my hair. Here is our room. It's pod style, but here's mine. It's actually like very long. You charger up there, light, and then you get towel sheets, flat sheet and stuff. We've checked into Dutchies, which is our hostel for the next two nights here. We are going on the bus to Den Haag, The Hague. Go to the museum, I bought a snack for the way. Ginger candy, not Trader Joe's, like Grace's favorites. And also, my face is very dry. Windy! <laughs> First destination here is Chinatown. As you can see behind me, there's the classic gate. So we're gonna walk down the street and explore a little bit. Right in front of the Nordadine Palace, which is one of three official palaces belonging to the Dutch royal family. And the architecture style is Dutch classicism. Opened on August 28th, 1913, and donated by Andrew Carnegie. Behind me is the Peace Palace. It houses many international peace-related things, like the International Court of Justice. We're at the museum that I cannot pronounce, Mari Tushui or something, which has the girl in the pearl earring. And I'm trying to be quiet to be respectful, but I'm really excited to see it because it's my favorite painting. Bad news. Uh, we came here with the girl in the pearl earring, and she ain't here. She back in Amsterdam, partying it up while we're over here in the hay. And instead, onion ring to show. So, pooey wooey, Grace is a little sad. I understand, but. There's no Vermeer at all, actually. No Vermeer at all. Lava <laughs> Carba! Alright guys, we're at Dutchie's Hostel and each room has a different theme and we're in fashionista, which I love. I'm joking, I don't care. It's Audrey Hepburn theme, not fashionista theme, but we do have a wall of magazines. We're sharing a room with six other people, so eight beds total. I like that there's a table in the middle of the room, plus this really fun chandelier. We're going out, we're going out. Oh, my feet moving. Oh, my feet moving. <laughs> Good morning. Today is our last day in Amsterdam and we're spending the time by exploring the city. We wanted to go back to Albert Koop Market, but it's closed on Sunday, so no Albert Koop. So now we're walking to check for the canal prices. So far we found one that's 13 euros, which is the cheapest. This is our last meal in Amsterdam and we made pasta with a little bit of soup broth base and mushrooms and then we baked some chicken. We have some pears for a dessert and a little bit of cake. One final strip waffle before we leave. Cheers. We had the best time in Amsterdam. Eric and I both loved it here, both in Amsterdam proper and also the other areas that we went to, such as Rotterdam, The Hague and Zonshans, and it was a great trip. And we'll miss it, but we're on to our next adventure in Morocco. Woo!